essential tremor can be a very isolating disease. For many of us, most of us, we're pretty independent. That's the way our culture is. And to have to give up that because you can't feed yourself or you can't sign your checks can be heartbreaking. So the term benign essential tremor is really a misnomer. What it means is it's not associated with loss of other forms of movement, but it is by no means a benign disorder. I've always had essential tremors since I was a child. My essential tremor has affected my life for probably at least 25 plus years. And it affected my career. It affected just about everything I have done. In a work setting, I need to write. I need to be able to uh, sign contracts. I check into hotels and uh, the, the shakes hurt. I mean, it makes it very difficult for me to, uh, to get through those parts of, of life. I was ready to try something else uh, a long time ago, but I wasn't into this deep penetration stuff, and that seemed to be my only outlet. I, I found um, on the internet the, uh, the procedure involving the focused ultrasound, and uh, it was really compelling. I don't have to uh, have a, a traditional brain surgery. And uh, after that, I, uh, I got a, a hold of a gentleman by the name of Lawrence. He answered questions before I, I actually had them. Educators at Inside Tech explained a lot of things and I think they were very uh, thorough. I spend a lot of time with my patients making sure that their expectations, not only of the procedure and the process that we go through, but also of the expected result. So that at the end of the day, if they've undergone something that's completely elective, they're going to be happy. They explained a lot of things to me that, that made sense. And that's why I'm here and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I actually believe that for people who have their dominant hand affected and who are not horribly affected by head tremor or vocal tremor, for those folks, MRI-guided focused ultrasound is great because they can get a result that will meet their expectation and will do so without all of the risks of a surgery. This is somebody who walked in one way and walks out with their life changed for the better in a matter of a few hours. That to me is so rewarding and so exciting. The first thing I'd like to do after the, the treatment is to sign my name. It sounds really simple, but it's a wonderful thing for an individual who struggled to sign your name when you're trying to check into a hotel, rent a car, or do anything. So if I can sign my name without having my hand shake, that's gonna be wonderful. You should have a detailed conversation with your physician regarding the risks and benefits of treatment options prior to treatment. The most common complications reported by subjects in Insight Tech sponsored clinical studies after treatment included imbalance, gait disturbance, numbness, tingling, and headache, head pain. Most complications were classified as mild or moderate, and 48% resolved on their own within 30 days. Additional infrequent events included dizziness, taste disturbance, slurred speech, fatigue, and vomiting. Persistent complications at three years included imbalance, unsteadiness, gait disturbance, musculoskeletal weakness, and numbness, tingling. For complete safety information, please visit usa.essential-tremor.com slash safety-information.